the life of a college student is not as glamorous as people lead you to believe. Trapped in this cold, wooden prison surrounded by fans, posters, cereal, having to make your own bed and brush your teeth without your mom reminding you to. And of course, there's schoolwork. Book after book. Principles of economics, uh, more like principles of keeping your virginity. Writing papers, typing labs, completing projects, and of course, in my case, YouTube. There are weeks where I'd live off only breakfast bars and Campbell soup packets. I ate them raw. Every man has a breaking point. There's only so long one can go before they give in, and I nearly reached mine. See, I realized at that dark moment that there had to be a better way. <laughs> PC gaming, man. But hold on a second. I'm too poor to afford a fancy GTX 1080 and an i7-68, uh, whatever, but there is a solution for us poor college students, and that solution is this, the GTX 1050 Ti. This beautiful GPU features NVIDIA's new cooler design, very angular, very attractive, very cut down, a lot more sleek than the rounded edges of the GTX 750 Ti. At only about $140, the latest offering from NVIDIA is pretty cheap, and it features the new Pascal architecture. It's not cut down, it is the legit Pascal architecture. That means you're getting very, very good power efficiency and very good performance per watt. So this GPU requires no power connectors at all. All you need is a PCIe lane. You're off and running. And that's what so many YouTubers just glaze over. They act like it's not important. They're like, yeah, it's very low power, but they don't mention this thing does not need any power connectors at all. They don't stress that enough, but that's the most important. That's the selling point of this GPU right here. Since it requires no extra power connectors, it'll work with pretty much any power supply. All you have to do is get a used PC, you throw it in, you have a gaming PC, that's it. It's a very big deal, and it is the main selling point of this GPU. As far as the specs go, you're getting 4GB of GDDR5, 768 CUDA cores, a 1290 core clock, and a 1392 boost clock. Very, very respectable specs for a GPU that requires so little power. 4 gigabytes of GDDR5, that's a very good amount right there, very solid for your higher resolution gaming if you're looking to uh, dip your toe into 1440p games. You aren't going to be able to do too much of that on this GPU, but it is a possibility. 768 CUDA cores compared to the 750Ti and the RX 460, very, very good. For connectivity, we get an HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.4, and a DVI. So HDMI 2.0, that means you're going to be able to display 4K 60Hz. Now you won't be able to game like that, but you can watch movies on this thing in 4K 60fps, and same thing with the DisplayPort. So if you're looking to view some media in 4K, uh, I don't judge what kind of media, you can do that. Definitely do that. Uh, for the features, you get all the standard NVIDIA stuff, G-Sync, OpenGL, GPU Boost, whatever. But the point is, you throw this GPU into a used PC, or even your family PC, you get a very powerful gaming PC, supposedly. But just how powerful? You know, is this significantly better than the RX 460? Is it that much better than the 750 Ti that somebody would want to upgrade? Let's see. It'll come out in the benchmarks. So, to benchmark this thing, what I did was I threw it into my home PC, as you saw in the clip a little bit ago. I uh, just took out my R9 390, threw this thing in. Uh, pretty much my home PC, what this thing has is a Core i7-860 clocked at 3.0 GHz, 10 GB of DDR3, and Windows 10 64-bit. So, while this might not be the most this optimal test rig, like you see a lot of people they have uh, i7-5860Ks, the 32 gigabytes of DDR4, I think my test rig for this GPU is actually a lot closer to a real life scenario. If you're going to be using a GTX 1050 Ti, you're not going to have an i7. Chances are you're not going to have 32 gigabytes of DDR4, so I realize a lot of times they do that to 
get rid of bottlenecks. However, in this case, I think it's a lot more realistic to test it with my PC right here. So it was a win-win situation. So the way I tested this GPU and compared it to fellow GPUs was I found out a few benchmarks on the internet from a variety of sources. I compiled them all together and they, like I said, they're from a variety of GPUs. It tested 10 games and then I took my 750 or my 1050 Ti and I played a few of those same games so that I can accurately compare the performance on, uh, you know, across these GPUs as best as I can. Now, of course, these benchmarks I got off the internet were conducted on different PCs than mine, so there's going to be a little bit of variability as far as FPSs go, but it's still going to give you a good general idea. The GPUs I compared this uh, 1050 Ti to were a GTX 750 Ti to GB and RX 460 4GB, which are both power connectless GPUs, kind of in the same category as the 1050 Ti. And then to give you an idea of how much better the performance is taking a step up, I also have the RX 470 and the GTX 1060. After that, I ran a few benchmarks on my own that the benchmarks I got online did not really satisfy. A few games were not included in those online benchmarks. I uh, benchmarked Bioshock Infinite, Metro Last Light, Need for Speed Most Wanted, CSGO, and Dirt 3. All the benchmarks I did were conducted in high settings 1080p. Some games had anti-aliasing on, some had it off. It really depended on how hard the game was to run. I was shooting for 60 FPS on the 1050 Ti. Uh, just kind of did my best and did what I could to make sure the comparison was accurate and compiled as good as it could be. That being said, I'm going to show you guys the benchmarks right now, show you some average FPSs across the board, kind of let you make a comparison, and I'll be back. This is a Chucky Beat production. production. So I guess the numbers speak for themselves. This GPU right here is the single best, the single fastest low power consumption GPU that requires no external power from the power supply. So many reviewers just skim over this fact. They don't really think about it. They don't really care about it. They just look at it from a price to performance perspective. However, when you don't require extra power connectors from a power supply to power a GPU, that means you can put this GPU into any PC at all. That has so many additional advantages that price to performance just simply can't address. You can put this, well for instance, you can buy a used PC on eBay for $100. It can have a quad core CPU, 8 gigs of DDR3, 1 terabyte hard drive. You've seen me do this in past videos and you throw a card like this into that PC and for about $250 you have a PC that can pay, play pretty much any game. 1080p, 60fps, it's unbelievable. $250 to get into PC gaming and play games pretty respectably, honestly. I think if you put this in a quality Intel Core 2 quad rig, you'd see very, very good price to performance. I'd argue the very best price to performance in any possible gaming PC uh, combination. I really can't imagine uh, being able to do more per dollar than with a GPU like this and a used PC. 
Now that being said, it's not going to give you the best performance in 1440p, VR, video editing, but if you're looking purely at PC gaming, building a used rig with a GPU like this, or even just throwing this into your home PC, it's going to really open your eyes to the world of PC gaming, and it's going to be a fun little project and an easy to do project, since you don't really have to do much, you just throw this into a PCIe slot and boom, you're going. It's a very amazing card, I've been looking forward to this card for a long time. I knew something like this was going to come out after I saw the uh, 750 Ti, and then, you know, for the longest time, we didn't see anything else from NVIDIA other than, you know, 750 Ti, no power connections, and we didn't see uh, anything else for the longest time. But this is the answer to my prayers. This GPU, it outperforms the RX 460. I was really impressed with the RX 460, I thought that was a great uh, deal, great for your money, great to throw into a used PC, but this just takes what the 460 did and raises it up a notch. This thing will play pretty much any game, 1080p around 60fps, of course it depends on the game. It's, it's a phenomenal GPU and if you're looking to get into PC gaming, if you're looking to build just a uh, used PC rig or even you know just throw it into your family PC there's no other video card I'd recommend more than this one right here very easy to do very fast very simple very good very reliable very cool efficient it's answer to my prayers and I feel like so many reviewers just skim over that but that's the most important feature of this GPU I hope you all enjoyed the video if you did be sure to leave a like rating be sure to comment if you have any questions I'll answer those comments personally, because that's just the kind of guy I am. And if you're interested in buying this GPU right here, go down to the description. There's an Amazon Associates link, and if you use it, I get a small kickback, and it helps out the channel a ton. If you use that link, I'd really appreciate it. So I hope you all have a good day. See you later. Peace. This is a Chucky Beat production. 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 production.